So, hey, Teomnes, I am Rubinus, and today we are talking about the design for music and sound in video games. Much like the story, music is secondary to the game, but it can help augment the experience. Where the story can help retain players if the gameplay is bad, I can't really say the same for music. Even if the music is banging, it won't be enough to keep players interested in a game that's outside their tastes that it, or that it has poor design. Good music can help immerse the player in the world, or augment the story to match the situation, or limit frustration by giving some good tunes while the enemy rampages against the player. They can also help fill in the empty space while the player is traveling, exploring, completing a puzzle, or along those lines. Music and sounds in early video games were simplistic, basic melodies crafted with synthesizers. Just like with the text and voice acting, music had to be simplistic to keep file sizes low, which led to short, repetitive tunes, but that also led to some memorable, catchy melodies, as having to hear a one minute tune on repeat needed to be enjoyable, or else players would never get past the first level. Nowadays, games have full, legitimate songs with recorded instruments instead of fake compositions or loops, which can help make the music and sounds more focused on the story or game, but at the price of being recognizable. Games with more subtle and personalized music tend to lose that humming ability from older games. Anybody can hum the Mario Bros theme, and people will recognize it, but trying to hum Unravel's music doesn't have the same immediate recognition. The soundtrack for Unraveled is magnificent and beautiful, but it shows that there are different purposes and charms to the different styles. Music and sound within a game should match the theme of the story. If the game is horror, having slow, low-pitched sounds and music can help augment the experience and build dread. Fast-paced music can help the action feel more vibrant and intense, and repetitive loops can help the players have white noise while repeating challenges in racing games. L-fitting music and sounds can help break immersion and confuse the player or ruin whatever emotion is supposed to be portrayed in the game. One of my favorite melodies is from Resident Evil 2 1998 with the save room. Although the save room themes are nice across the series, I believe that this is perfection. It encapsulates the idea of safety, yet impending doom. You are safe here, but there is still a threat and you need to face it. It matches the theme of the room as well as the setting of the game. Sound design for effects is a little different because they are more sporadic, but should still be catered to specific events and actions to help augment the experience and fill in the downtime. They should make the action feel more vivid and reflect what is happening in the world, but not be overpowering. The sound effects are often hyperboles, just like in film, but they add weight to the action to make it feel real or alive. Swords should not make the shing when pulled out of a sheath, but it's a nice dramatic noise compared to the slight f of a real sword. Sound design should be a little ridiculous at times to help give the theatrical experience of games. Footsteps being pounding, searching inventory having some serious rustles, character deaths being overdramatic. Not only will sounds fill in the empty world, they give it life and can make the situation, setting, or action more vivid with the correct sound, even if unrealistic. Sound design follows a much more simplistic idea than music theory, although it's perhaps actually harder to record. Basically, does the sound help make the action feel alive? A rule of thumb I asked myself when designing the music and sounds for my game were the following. 1. Is the sound or music related to the action or situation? 2. Did it improve anything? 3. Is it obnoxious or overpowering? 4. Is it repeatable? 5. Does the situation benefit from silence? The sound or music doesn't have to hit all these points, but it should at least hit one. Much like gameplay aspects and mechanics, if it doesn't add anything to the overall experience, you don't need it in the game. The approach to sound and music in games is unique to developers. My music is centered on the music and instruments of Native American, Inuit, Aboriginal, and Indigenous peoples, as that is the setting and population for the game. I do break out of that with some synths, metallic sounds, robotic noises when you encounter machines, or deal with ancient technology. 90% of the sounds and music are based on native cultures, but I also add bits that reflect the fact that the world has technology, aging history, and modern influences from other cultures. Horizon Zero Dawn is also based on native cultures, but often has a more synthetic or ambient approach to the music. The soundtrack is good, but the composer didn't necessarily limit the soundtrack to only using indigenous instruments like I did. Both are valid and fit the theme. Similar to gameplay, music theory has a set of guidelines for what makes music good. We have growth. What changes are there in the music? Just like I attribute in games, this growth can be changes in the instruments, melody, pitch, intensity, so on, 
of any kind. Harmony, how do the sounds and instruments play together? Do the different tempos and pitches play along, or is it like listening to baboons argue over who is going to eat the last of the banana pie? Melody, how do the pitches and cadence of the song melt together? Is it a jarring change from one to the next, or is it a smooth flow? Sound, what types of noises or sounds are being forced into your earballs? Is it percussions, strings, vocals, drowning noises, etc.? Rhythm, what is the flow of the song? What is the ebb and flow of the growth and melody? Is it consistently increasing, slowing as time progresses, or swaying back and forth? I am not musically trained, so I can't speak much more on the subject than to simply listen to the music and compositions and go into these principles and the early questions ask yourself. Can you enjoy the music? Does it fit the game? There are plenty of programs for music composition, and they each range from user-friendly for goons who know little about it, to horrific Lovecraftian concoctions that only magical music wizards will understand. There are also plenty of loops and sites offering either royalty-free loops that you can use to create unique compositions, although be careful that they are actually royalty-free and not stealing from published musicians, and there are also companies who create loops and bundles specifically for sale, which can be used in unique compositions commercially. How you choose to record and compose the music is entirely up to you, but research your options and know what the program does before buying anything. Don't spend on the massive programs if you're only using loops, since you don't really need to pay for the features to make beats from scratch. Sound recording is a bit different as sounds are much more unique and require some special treatment and finagling to get right. Typically, sound designers will create a portfolio of sounds, which means that they will walk around with a mic and record everything. They will hit and scratch random objects to make a variety of sounds, then mix them with different pitches and lengths to make unique sounds. Having a large profile of true sounds rather than synthesized ones can help make the world sound a bit more realistic. For sci-fi and tech sounds, the designer can be a little more flexible as those sounds don't actually exist, and thus can be crafted from just about anything. Ben Burt, the sound designer of the lightsaber, crafted the iconic noise from the hum of an old projector and TV interference from a shieldless mic. Sounds can also be voice created. I have recorded wind sounds with my own voice and modulated them to sound a little bit more realistic. Combining multiple takes can help mask any weird mouth or esophagus issues that get picked up with the mic. One thing that helps when mixing sound and music is that any abrupt changes in pitch, volume, or any imperfections in sound quality or recording that, you know, are jarring by themselves can be masked with other sounds. If you can't tell that a pitch changes with other sounds interacting with it, you don't need it to sound perfect by itself. If the overall composition sounds good, the listener will never know the difference. There is no need to be absolutely perfect. Since music and sound design are quite intense and vary in quality across the entire game, I will instead list a game which I think has music and sounds that help augment the experience of the game, and another that doesn't really benefit from its sounds. It's difficult to pinpoint a game with horrible music and sound that just isn't shovelware and has little to no effort put into it. Most games have decent or good sound design, so it's hard to find a game with enough examples of improper sound effects, but I think it's pretty intuitive when a sound works in a situation. Splinter Cell Chaos Theory has a soundtrack which I don't think Think really befits the game or adds to the gameplay properly. Although I think the music is well produced, has growth, sounds good, it doesn't augment the gameplay. The gameplay is all about stealth, staying in shadows and avoiding conflict. The music is at times subtle and tense to fit the theme of silence and the risk of being caught. There is also the music during tense segments and getting caught that is over the top. I would direct the music to be intense and threatening to convince the player to return to secrecy as the game is about stealth. However, the intense music is often too fast-paced and action-oriented and seems to encourage a fight to the death, then escape and outmaneuvering. Although it can be argued that the music fits the need to finish the fight and choose aggression as stealth is no longer an option, I also find that the mix of jazz percussion, electrical guitar, and horror synths to be a strange match for the game and seem to entice more fast-paced action. The music is fine to listen to mostly, but can be jarring and doesn't seem to fit the overall theme of the game or convince the player to keep on stealthing. Silent Hill's soundtrack, besides the first weird song, is brilliantly crafted to have an ethereal, unsettling tone throughout. The music is often slow, quiet, but intense, and filled with strange noises for a creepy ambience. As the game deals with ghosts, a nether realm, pterodactyls, and sexy nurses, the music is fitting. It is not overbearing, not obnoxious, matches the setting, and helps build the mood of uncertainty and fear. The game never really has a place for safety, and the music reflects that, although never becomes tiring, because the dread in the music is subtle mostly, so the player is not constantly bombarded with fear, but rather just discomfort. When the scenes transition to absolute unmitigated fear, 
hear the droning and high-pitched sounds get louder, and the rhythm picks up to increase its intensity. The sounds work in a delicious melody, and there are changes across the music for growth to keep it from becoming stagnant. Music and sound can help augment the experience of the game, help invoke emotion, and can help calm the player during challenging or stressful situations. Music can also help fill in the more empty parts of the game, although there should be enough growth and melody to keep it from becoming obnoxious. It should match the energy, situation, and theme of the game, but it does not have to stick entirely to the instruments or the setting. There is nothing wrong with catchy, repetitive loops so long as there is enough growth and harmony to make it enjoyable. Sound design should help bring in actions and the environment to life and can be more grandiose. It is not necessary to make sounds realistic as games are a form of entertainment and sometimes the spectacle is what we are going for. Sound and music alone are not enough to retain players when the gameplay is poor, but they can help retention during challenging parts or boring segments of the story and can bring people to play the game with the promise of some banging jams. Thanks everybody for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified of future videos. If you have any constructive criticism, things that you think that I missed, any good or bad games regarding music or sound, please let me know in the comment section below so that we can continue this discourse. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time with the overall mechanics. Until then, wale te omnes.